first two decades of the 20th century, the Compagnie Générale Transatlantique, more commonly known as the French Line or CGT, had established itself on the North Atlantic route. Their earlier ships, the France, Paris and De Grasse, had earned the company a reputation of quality and good service, taking the best of France to the high seas. The next ship, the well-regarded Île-de-France, entered service in 1920s and hinted at the direction the French line was heading in, sleek, popular and beautifully appointed ships. However, the entire world had been put on hold while the events of the Great War of 1914-1918 unfolded across Europe and predominantly in the very fields of France. The announcement by the French line, less than 10 years later, of the intention to build the largest and greatest superliner the world had ever seen was much more a statement about France itself. It signaled on a world stage the return of a proud country, rebuilding herself and reemerging as a great industrial power. Engineers would work hand in hand with the best French artists to produce a collaboration of function and form. Interiors would embrace the latest art movement of the day, Art Deco, Modernism, Minimalism. A Russian immigrant called Vladimir Yokevich approached the French line with his own revolutionary design for a ship's hull. He proposed a bulbous nose bow below the water line and a flat bottom parallel sided hull. The bow nose induced a wave which reduced the friction of the water along its sides. If a ship glides through water with less effort, then it uses less fuel, which is more efficient, needs only smaller engines, which give more room, and what's more, it could go faster. A clear indication of its hydrodynamic quality is that the hull produces almost no bow wave at all, and leaves behind a flat wake Yurkevich's hull design had one other huge bonus. It was beautiful. Its raking bow line, well jaw bow top, and turtle back stern had produced the rarest of things, a perfect fusion of science and aesthetic form. The liner would be the first over 1,000 feet and be the fastest afloat, crossing 80,000 tons, almost twice the size of Titanic. The planned first class dining wood would be by far the largest room ever placed into a ship and even today has never been surpassed. It would be over 300 feet long, 46 feet wide and 26 feet high. 12 15 foot pillars of glass illuminated the room and along the walls stood 38 columns equally bright. There would be a winter garden and aviary, indoor and outdoor swimming pool and a full-size cinema and theater, even a chapel and a synagogue. No other ship has ever captured the essence of an age, its artistic statement, or the spirit of the dance as is. The end result was a ship that is now accepted as the most innovative, the most artistic, and without equal, simply the greatest luxury liner of all time. Ce fut le Normandie. This was Normandy.
In part 2 you will receive your first class ticket for the Normandy and dine in the largest restaurant afloat. We will tour the ship to see for yourself if the French line managed to produce what they set out to.